a wonderful God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Good to be with God's people tonight. Amen? Amen. Even the kids are in here saying amen. Amen. The kids say amen. Praise the Lord. Good to be with God's people. Thankful for all of those that are joining us online. Amen. Thankful. All right. Our Bible reading tonight. Bible reading, just short verse of scripture. Which will also be our text verse. This is going to come out of John chapter 8. This is the gospel of John chapter 8. Verse 51, and all that love the Lord, say amen. Amen. Said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Oh, this is Jesus, amen. Oh, this is the Lord. He said, if a man keep my saying, this will be the result. Amen, this will be the outcome. Oh, what great of an outcome. He said, he shall never. Hey, man, look, say never. Oh, he shall never see death. Amen. Just for a little while, I'd like to preach a message entitled Tongue Power. Tongue Power. Reverend Robert, sir, if you'd stand and pray. Praise the Lord. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 3, there's a part of this verse that just really stands out. There's a part of this verse, and it talks about Jesus. Paul is talking about Jesus, or this writer of this book of Hebrews says that Jesus is is the one upholding all things by the word of his power. Amen. He's upholding all things. Amen. Whether if it's the universe, all things are upheld. Amen. All things continue in motion. Amen. All things should be fulfilling its purpose. Amen. For what God had created it to do. Amen. And it's upheld. Amen. By the word of his power. Just like he did from the beginning when he said, let there be. And it was so. Amen. Talk about turning the sun on. Amen. Or like that also that psalm says, or that, that song, or the, that uh, song singing about a redeemer. Who told the ocean you can only come this far? Amen. Amen. That was God. God said, stop right here. Amen. God said, stop right here. Amen. But the, the power that is in his word, amen, that even fascinated, but even brought a little bit of fear to the to the hearts of the disciples when when they went to wake Jesus up and said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? There's a storm amen, and waves in the water starting to get in the boat. He said, we're going to perish. And Jesus said, hey, man, be still. Peace, be still. Amen. And the storm was calm, wasn't it? Oh, and he could speak to the storm. I'm talking about tongue power tonight. Amen. We serve a God that still has power. We serve a God who has never lost his power. Amen. And we serve a God tonight that can speak to the things, amen, that are in our life that try to have power over us. Peace be still. And Isaiah Chapter 5, verses 10 through 11, it says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven 
and returneth not thither, does not return. He said, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now look at what God is saying here. He said, just like the rain comes down from heaven and it has a job. And look at what his job has done. It said, it watereth the earth. We just saw that in Washington, huh? Boy, it sure watered Washington. If it ain't watered the whole earth, boy, it sure watered Washington. Yes, it did. It'd be raining so much here we might not. Sometimes I'd be like, Lord, let me see that rainbow before I start building the ark, God. I need this. Okay, there's the rainbow. I see it, Lord. I see your promise, God. <laughs> <Sometimes>. <laughs> Living in Washington, you get washed away. All right, that was kind of dry. My bad. So listen, he said the rain comes down, it's going to water the earth. It's what it does. But in watering the earth, it said it brings forth the bud that it may give seed to the sower. Somebody's working. So that means somebody's depending upon some water. Look at the dependency of the sower. And then the sower is trying to make money so, so that somebody can eat, amen, so that somebody can, can bring food home on the table, amen, so that it can fill somebody's belly. Amen, it said as, as, as the water and the snow, amen, that it makes an impact on somebody else's life. Look what he says about his own word. He said, so shall my word go forth out of my mouth. God said this is a word's going to come forth out of my mouth. And it's not going to return void. He said the rain didn't return void. It meant somebody's still in business and somebody's belly is full. Amen. And he said, my word's not going to return unto me void. He said, but it shall accomplish. Amen. My word's going to accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Amen. You got to thank God when his word is sent your way. I said you got to thank God when his word is sent your way. You see, it's not by accident that you're here tonight. It's not by accident that you decided uh, to tune in right on Facebook Live. Amen. It might not be on accident that you'd come across us on YouTube or hearing the word of God. Amen. When the word of God is heading your way. Amen. It wants to prosper in you. It wants to work. Amen. And God wants to bring forth his will. Amen. God's going to bring forth what pleases him. Amen. But when God sends his word your way. We got to be thankful. Amen. We got to give him because look at what Psalm says. Psalms 107 verse 20. He said he sent his word and healed them. He said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, I'm thankful for the word of Almighty God. Amen. I'm thankful that God sent his word and healed me. You see, my soul was troubled. My spirit was troubled. Amen. Maybe you're left out of a bad relationship. Amen. And you're bound by jealousy. Amen. And so many wicked thoughts toward the person. Amen. And so much is going on in your heart and in your mind and in your life. Amen. And you're having trouble on social media, trying to try not to look at their page and get jealous and what they're trying to do, or you're trying to have do things out of jealousy to provoke them to jealousy. And then there's so much anger and bitterness. And hey, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Come on, that happens. And there's so much going on that you're in denial that it's controlling you, and it is. It's controlling you. It's controlling your thoughts, your emotions. And really, it's destroying you. God sent his word to deliver you from what's plaguing your heart because jealousy was about to destroy you. You were trying to destroy the person, but really, it's going to destroy you. And God saved you from the destruction of jealousy, the destruction of envy. Come on now. Oh, I'm so thankful that God sent his word and healed my heart. 
and man healed me from my situation. I was really in a bad place. I really felt some type of way. I mean, I didn't want to rise up and forgive anybody. I mean, I didn't want to rise up and be the bigger person and go talk to them and say, man, I forgive you. I mean, let's let this war be over. I mean, can we forgive one another? I mean, can we just move on? I mean, but the past afflictions would not let you move on. The past pains and wounds wouldn't let you move on. And I'm preaching tonight. I hope I am. I don't know. Am I just saying a bunch of words or is it tongue power? I don't know. Come on, talk to me tonight. I hear no amens. Folks is like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amen. I actually knew somebody that could not snap. Now, I'm not finding any fault with them, but, you know, when life is that easy and all you got to do is snap and you can't. It's like this brother's really struggling. <laughs> like he can't snap. I really knew somebody that could not snap. Everybody should know how to snap because there's sometimes we trying to get out of stuff. So it's like, no, okay. <laughs> it's reality. I'm not getting out of this. <laughs> All right, let's keep preaching. Amen. I mean, I love the word. Oh, I love the word of God. The word of God delivered me from my afflictions. The word of God delivered me from so much. Amen. I'm so thankful that I did break up that follow ground. Amen. So that the word of God can penetrate my heart. Amen. I broke up that follow ground so that the word can fall upon good ground. Amen. And bring forth seed. Amen. Sixtyfold, a hundredfold. Amen. I can live a blessed life so that I can bring forth good fruit. Amen. But he said he sent his word and healed them. And deliver them from their destructions. See, Paul, the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. I'm sorry, Rev. We got to fix these guys. I'm hearing too much. It sounds like a real bad radio station. No, not now. Maybe after. We're going live. Folks see you up here. <laughs> Just don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. All right. Paul said, grace be to you in peace from God, the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you know that grace and peace came from heaven? From God and Jesus, amen? Amen. And the Holy Ghost, the Godhead. He said, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Aren't you so glad that you're unplugged? Unplugged. I don't have to deal with the little jealousy and the little talk talk of the world or the little things that are going on in the, the circles. And I've been unplugged from that. I mean, I've been removed from all that. Because you remember when you were plugged into all of that, what it did to your heart and what it did to your mind and what it caused you to be conformed to. I'm so, God, uh, I'm so glad that God unplugged me from the little games that people play. I'm not a part of those games anymore. Amen. You're unplugged. Amen. You're called out. Amen. But he said God delivered us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Amen. It was the will of God. It was in God's will that we would be delivered, that we would not be destroyed. Amen. God doesn't not, he doesn't want anybody to perish. That's why he's long-suffering. God loves us. God is saying, man, I know you keep messing up, but, but, uh, but I'll go the distance with you. I know you can get this right. Amen. God has faith in us. Amen. God, amen. If God was going to give up on us, then he would have never came. If, if he already knew he was just, it wouldn't work. 
But I'm looking at believers tonight. God did not give up on us. Amen. I'm looking at blood-bought believers. Amen. Now, I mean, this was a plan that God had before the foundation of the world. So what you're believing in right now was planned. <laughs> Amen. And I'm looking at people that believed in God's plan that he had before the foundation of this world. Amen. According to the will of God and of our Father. But this is what he says. Paul said, I marvel. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. He said, which is not another. There's no other gospel that you could receive that can give you the victory that you've received in the first gospel. He said, there's not another Jesus. There's no other Jesus that you can receive and accept that can get you to heaven outside the one that we have already preached and that has delivered you from a life of sin, that has delivered you from the wrath to come. He said, there's not another gospel. Amen. He said, there's no other word of power that can deliver you outside of the one that has already been delivered. Amen. Outside of the one that you have received and that has cleansed you so that you can be baptized by the Holy Ghost. There's no other message, amen, that you can receive that will cleanse the heart of a sinner, that will change their life and clean them up and purify them so that they could receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How I many you know you cannot receive the baptism unless you're saved? You have to be saved to then receive the Holy Ghost. But if you receive a gospel that does not cleanse you, will you receive the? That's why the devil fights to change the truth of the gospel. He wants you to receive a Jesus that does not deliver. He wants you to receive a Jesus that is okay with sin. There's no power in that gospel. Come on now. Come on. You got to understand that the devil is anti-God. He's anti-Christ. He's anti-promise. He's anti-authority. He rebelled against the highest authority. Let me say it again. He rebelled against the highest authority. You think about authority, you got your parents, teachers, boss, you know, governors, presidents. Judge, they have authority. But he rebelled against the highest authority. The highest authority. And you have to, you have to understand that, that if you want to change order, that's what the devil does. He wants God's order to be changed. And God doesn't change his order. Because when he speaks it, it's perfect. It is. Amen. But he wants to change order wants to change his order in order to change that you just have to rebel against the first order and in rebelling against the first order you have to remove the fear of consequence that's what he did for Adam and Eve he removed the fear of the consequence and when you remove fear of consequence people will freely disobey they'll willingly Go against the first order. You see, you have to remove the fear of consequence. I'm thankful tonight that I really believe that I'm among people that fear the consequence. That's why Paul said, he said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. He said, because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. God does not change his order. For a new order to be brought in, you have to stop fearing the consequence of the first order or the commandment 
or the way. But I'm so thankful I'm really among some people that will open the Bible and say, God, you said that? I'll do it because I know who you are. <laughs> Amen? I don't do it just because of what it says. Do it because I know who you are. Amen. Have you come to that place where you're just not like believing? Oh, I believe. I believe. No, I know him. I know him. I know him. It's just like you would tell people, you know, you go out and play with some friends and they're like, man, let's let's go steal from the store. You're like, you don't know my dad. Because if I get caught, you know, they have no fear because they have not been under the rules and regulations of your household that came from your father. So they going to steal. They don't understand what goes on in your house and why that fear is in your heart. But you do because you know your father. Hello? Amen. It's like God gives fathers the supernatural power with the belt. It's fast. They're getting faster and faster. Hey, the Bible said it. He said, spare not for their crying. They won't die. <laughs> it said it will drive that foolishness far from them. They ready to steal. God said it's going to drive fool, that foolishness far from them. Amen. All right. You say, Pastor, you're not a parent. How could you teach me? Hey, I'm not even trying to hop in that area. I'm just reading the Bible. The Bible said it. Amen. The Bible said it. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. Amen. Can I relay a message? Amen. We got a messenger here tonight. <laughs> Amen. So listen, listen to this. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you. He said, unto another gospel? Unto another gospel. He said, which is not another. There's not another gospel that can deliver you on such a fashion. God delivered you from dead works so that you can serve him. You used to serve idols. He said, and now you serve the living God. He said, hold to that gospel. Hold to that gospel. Amen. But listen. Jesus said this. Because we have an example of this. You have an example of this. Jesus had more than 12 disciples at one moment. Walking with him. I mean, not just people believing, you know, they were now walking with him. And the Bible said, he said, therefore, I say unto you that no man can come unto me except it be given unto him of my father. In verse 66 of John chapter 6, it says, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They stopped walking with Jesus because of his saying. They said, man, this is too hard. Who can hear it? But prior to that, it said Jesus <laughs> perceived within himself that his disciples murmured at him. He murmured at him. Amen. Jesus didn't back up. He didn't. He perceived that they murmuring and he brought it up. So what you saying? What you say? Y'all remember that with your parents. Boy, you say something under your breath. I didn't hear you. You say it a little louder. Don't be talking under your breath. This the one I still don't understand. They be like, why are you sucking your teeth? I'm like, sucking my teeth? How do how do you accomplish that? Are you sucking my teeth? 
I was, I was lost like Nicodemus. I'm like, how do I suck my teeth? <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> you know, I completely forgot what I was mad about. You know, sucking. I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> I feel somebody giving a long description right in the comment section. Like, <laughs> I tell you what it means. <laughs> My bad. I wasn't calling on any parents tonight to give a description. <laughs> All right. But they were murmuring at what he was saying, and Jesus brought it up. And then he began to speak a little more. And that's when he said, I say unto you that no man can come unto me except it be given unto him of my father. He said, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. Now he turned back to the twelve. He said, will you go? He said, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, said, Lord, to whom shall we go? He said, thou hast the words of eternal life. Hey, man, it's like he's reconfirming what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to tell you something. If any man keeps my sayings, he'll never see death. He'll never see death. And right here, Peter's like, man, Lord, if I leave you, I leave eternal life. And man, he said, I can't leave you. He said, thou hast the words of eternal life. And man, it's just, can I say something? It's just like what God did for Adam in the garden. God formed a man out of the clay of the earth. And I told you, you can go do the same thing with a sandcastle. Come on, you can go down to the beach and do your little thing. But God formed a direct replica of himself. But he was just a pile of dirt. And he did not come alive. There was no life within Adam until God breathed a part of himself into the nostrils of man. And that's when he came alive. And tonight Jesus is saying, the words that I will breathe in you will give you life. This is what Peter's been saying. He's like, Lord, the words that you've been putting inside me. God, I've been your disciple. I've been your di discipline one. He said, God, amen, I know what you've been saying. Amen. And it's been doing something to my heart and my mind and in my life. It's been changing me. He said, God has been giving me everlasting life. He said, to whom shall I go? Who, what other gospel can I go to to get this word? Amen. What other man? What other prophet? Amen. Whatever, what other religion can I go to? to God I can't go nowhere outside of you Jesus he said to whom shall we go amen eternal life is already right here amen in God I'm gonna stay but he said this and we believe and are sure Peter said I, we believe and we're sure about this and because I'm sure about this we ain't going nowhere he said that thou art the Christ the son of the living God. He said, God, we believe and we're sure. Amen. And that's how it has to be in your life. You look at the life of Peter. I mean, Peter had his ups and downs. Peter really had his ups and downs. Amen. But Peter kept the faith. You're going to have some up and downs in your Christianity. Amen. You're going to have some up and downs. But what's going to keep you is your surety about him. I know who he is. Amen. And he's given me life. Amen. I may drop the ball. Amen. I may, I may mess up. But God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And God's long suffering. Amen. God, his mercy endures forever. I'm not going anywhere. Amen. I'm staying right here. Amen. Because I'm telling you, if you leave God, you're only going to go to the devil. Who's outside the devil? <laughs> That's who you're going to. Let's just keep it like, if you leave God, you're going to the little slew foot. You're going to the devil. 
who's already defeated by the one you left. He gave you victory over the devil, and then you're going to leave and go to the devil, the one who he defeated. You're going to be defeated with him. But tonight, this is our victory. This is our victory. Amen. You may play basketball. You may play tennis. You may play any type of sports. Or you may do something. And somebody may ask, did you get the victory tonight? And you have so much joy. Like, ah! Yeah. You know, dump the whole Gatorade on the coach. His, stole, his clothes are so sticky it broke the washer. <laughs> but our victory is more joyous than that. We come more alive with the victory that we got in Jesus. Because listen to this. Listen to this. Let's look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 53. But I need you to pay attention to how Paul speaks this. And he's speaking it because he's not just believing. He knows. He's confirming it because he knows it's going to happen. Listen to what he says. He said, for this corruption, talking about the body, he said, this corruption must, it must it will put on incorruption. It must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. Jesus said, we'll never see death. It's because he said, I'm bringing you with me. He said, I'm the I am. I'm before all things. And by me, all things consist. Amen. He even said, he said, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> and I am is, he's eternal. He's existed before all things. I am that I am. Amen. And I told you about that. Gee, God said, this is my name from generation to generation. He said, Moses, go tell them that I am has sent you. And he said, this is my name. And people fail to realize that they say God's name every time they introduce themselves. I am Jacob. When you say I am, you're saying God existed before me. I am. Amen. Tell that to an atheist next time you kind of talk to him. And say, what's your name? Introduce yourself. I am. Ah, you said God's name. <laughs> Tricked you. Put you in a trick bag, brother. <laughs> but listen to how Paul is talking. He said, this corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. He said, so when? Look, he said, so when? Because this is going to happen. He said, so when this corruption shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, he said, then shall be brought to pass the saying, <laughs> It is written, death is swallowed up in victory. He said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Amen. It no longer has victory because Jesus said, if you'll just follow my sayings, amen, if you just walk in my word, amen, my word is sent forth and it's going to accomplish my will and it's going to please me, amen, and it pleased God that we shall have eternal life. Amen. That's what he said. He delivered us from this present world. Amen. And God's going to give us eternal life. That's what the Bible, that's the gospel. Amen. The John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes 
believeth in him should not perish. Amen. I believe in him. I believe in his word. I believe in his ways. Amen. And I'm going to follow. I'm going to be his disciple. I'm going to walk with him. Amen. And God, amen, is going to love me. That's what he said. He said, I'll be with you even unto the end of the world. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's real love. Amen. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. God loves us. Amen. And he wants us to have eternal life. Won't you stand with me tonight? Do you have this same mind and attitude as Paul? Because they believed and they knew God. God said, I'll never see death because he's eternal. And he wants me to be with him for all eternity. Amen. All eternity. Will you speak boldly and say, man, this body is rotten day by day. But we're going to put off this corruption. And I'm going to take up incorruption. Because my God is sitting in heaven. Amen. And he's going to reign forever. And he offered me a seat. And he did. We're sitting, sitting in heavenly places with God. He said, I'm going to sit you at my right hand. But he said, you got to overcome this world. He said, just like I overcame this world and my father sat me out of his right hand. He said, to whom overcomes the world? He said, I'm going to grant you that same thing. I'm going to sit you right next to me. Amen. Sitting right next to Jesus. Can you imagine? Amen. Come on, how about it tonight? That's our victory. We won't see death. That's what Jesus said. He'll never see death. Never. <laughs> He'll be with me. Amen? Praise God. That's our victory. Amen? That's our victory tonight. Amen? Over the devil, hell, and the grave, and sin. Amen? And we'll be in all eternity with God. Won't you praise him tonight? Come on, won't you praise him? Come on, let's find a place to pray tonight. Come on, let's seek the face of God and let's thank him. Let's take time to thank him. He accomplished so much for us. Amen. Amen. Let God really bless your life and your heart. Amen. Come on, won't you pray a little bit? Won't you seek God? Won't you thank him tonight? He's worthy of all our praise. Amen. Thank him tonight.